Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade, and no, I'm not hiding a blue check mark on X. Today on the show, we've got the end of Jordan 1s, maybe, more Kobe Pro Trolls, the week's hottest releases, and of course, a hard pass. All right, as we always do, let's start the show with some hot takes. First up, well, wait, before we get to that, let me get this right. Elon is getting people to pay for the right to hide their blue check mark. After nearly a decade of the internet making us all believe that stupid thing was a status symbol like Dior Jordans, you can hide it if you want. It's like finally being able to buy Dior Jordans, but it turns out the swoosh is Velcro and you can switch out the Dior print for a regular gray one. Look, man, just because Elon was really, really good at one or two things, and even that's debatable, doesn't mean he's good at everything, which hilariously is what he wants to do with X. If Tony Stark was still here, he'd be rolling over in his grave. That's a black dynamite reference. It only took me a few years to finally work that into the show and I'm feeling pretty, pretty good about it. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Uh, by the way, CM Punk chose the wrong week to associate himself with X again. It was more implied for the past 15 years or so, but then to spray paint it on the AEW championship like he's a bootleg member of the NWO? Genius chess move there, punker. Okay, now on to the actual hot takes. Jordan 1s are dead, apparently. There's been a lot of LOL, you still wear Jordan 1s commentary on the internet lately, and all I got to say is, finally. This is a win-win for everybody if true. If Jordan 1s are no longer popular, that means it should be easier to buy ones for those who still want them and we finally get to talk about other sneakers besides ones. Of course, we all know this is a bunch of BS because as soon as those Union 1s drop and the reimagined Black Toe releases later this year, everybody's gonna be back on that bandwagon. Still, it is nice to dream though. Sneakers Day is finally coming to the US on September 9th. It's an annual event celebrated in European and Asian territories that includes restocks and hype releases. Not gonna lie, I'm not really looking forward to it. It's like celebrating futility and failure. Like, it's when I have conversations with friends of mine who are Clipper fans. I always ask them, yeah, what's, what's it like? I mean, our winning percentage ain't great either, but 17 out of 76 is better than nothing. Uh, golf kicks have turned gloves into golf gloves. I, I can't believe I've been on this earth for as long as I have and I never thought of that sneaker pun. It's like when I found out that Sus Mario Sep meant Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Well, at least I figured out Miles Prowler in like three seconds. I had a friend who lost his mind when he figured that one out 20 years later. Uh, shout out to Talon Say, I hope I'm saying that right, for turning his Crocs into cargo shorts. You know, you know when sneakers started doing the whole hidden pocket thing to hide their stash? It was only a matter of time before someone tried the same on some Crocs. All it needs now is a Call of Duty collab and every bro would be on it. Team USA Basketball received some red, white, and blue Kobe 6 Pro Trolls for the Nike guys. Look, John Donahoe. You need to stop playing with our emotions with this Kobe brand thing. Don't just do it for your country. Do it for Kobe fans around the world. And most importantly, do it for your boy Jock Slade. When ain't nobody else care, John Donahoe, Jock Slade cares. As long as you make more pro tros. Uh, Jorts are back if Swaggy P or maybe Uncle P is to be believed. The former Laker and Drew League legend pulled up to his alma mater USC and hooped in some Cosmic Unity 2s and Nike LeBron 20s. I kind of keep forgetting he hasn't been with Adidas for a minute. Anyways, I don't know if this is for a real return of George after some guy we couldn't see tried for like 20 years to make it happen, but all I know is that anybody who shows up to hoop in George or board shorts is either in middle school or slowly hustling you in Venice Beach like they're Billy Hoyle. Uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. was a guest on Full Size Run and he revealed something that I didn't think was possible for someone who called themselves Tsunami Poppy. We were already Adidas, so I was already comfortable with the shoes. Ultra Boost showing up to the house, like left and right? No, I didn't get none of those for free. Uh, what? I ain't get no Yeezys for free with Adidas. I know the clip is about him not getting Yeezys during that era, which is crazy, but Ubre wasn't getting Ultra Boost either? This had to have been happening during the era when Adidas was perpetuating that they couldn't make enough Boost pellets or something like that. Man, that was a moment in time when boost balls were actually selling like they were precious metals. 
And since we're keeping it in the complex world, let's keep it in the complex cinematic universe. Let's call it that. Ronnie Feig was a guest on the Complex Sneakers podcast, and he talked about, among other things, his recent collab with Marvel and Asics and this interesting nugget. Very interesting time in footwear right now because people are more interested in trying new things in footwear, like, you know, trying to step outside of what they typically would wear and try something new. And I think that that's what we're seeing right now. And I'm all for it. I want people to try new things, um, you know, so they could fall in love with products for the right reasons. I like when people have their own, you know, opinions, like when people used to walk into David Z pre-internet era and try on six pairs of shoes before buying one. Without used- having somebody tell them beforehand, that this is a classic, this is cool, this is exactly. what so-and-so wore. Exactly, they used to come in and they used to ask about information about certain silhouettes. Mm. Those times have changed, but it's all cyclical and people are thirsty for information or people are thirsty to discover. And he's right. There is definitely a growing number of people who are no longer limiting themselves to just Nikes and Jordans. Solomon, Hoka, Mero, all are growing in popularity. The problem is that the loudest people on the internet still like only Nikes and Jordans and Yeezys. So the perception is that that all people really want to talk about, but it ain't true. Uh, Houston Rockets rookie Cam Whitmore was asked by Dez at Nice Kicks, who's the Washington Wizards goat? Cam responded with John Wall, which, you know, fair. No disrespect to Bradley Beal. But a healthy wall was a problem once upon a time. But then Dez breaks out with the knowing troll and mentions Michael Jordan. Cam bites, and next thing you know, we've got a viral clip. Personally, Gilbert Arenas is the goat wizard. Wes Unseld is the GOAT bullet, and MJ, well, MJ did give us some 50-point gems and a memorable run in those retro bullets jerseys, so at worst, he's number three wizard behind Wall and No Chill Gill. Again, no disrespect to Brad Bill, who I will never forgive for flexing on myself and a certain co-writer and wearing better kicks during an E3 Call of Duty interview almost a decade ago. Look, Brad, if there's one thing I knew I had in the bag, it was the best sneaker award in any year that I went to E3. But no, then Brad had to go and ruin the fun. Thanks, Cam Whitmore. I had buried that Mary deep down into my soul and you brought it back. Any sorry. Next story. A few weeks ago, we talked about the one of one, the one ring card being pulled from the Lord of the Rings and the Magic Gathering collab set. The card has since been graded by PSA and has also found a buyer, and it is none other than Raising Cane's and Elder Scrolls enthusiast, Post Malone. Well, I guess that's better than Logan Paul wearing a Charizard chain wherever he goes, I, I, I guess, but congrats to Posty. He's now the rap game Gollum who could use some positive publicity after the Gollum game was so bad. There's definitely gonna be a precious sample on whatever his next record is, isn't there? Like, you almost can guarantee it. Anyway, all right, let's move on to the Heat Check where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. We've got a lot, so stay tuned. We have Billie Eilish, Nike Air, Alpha Force 88 in white and red and white and black. That's on the 8th for 130. The Nike Air Max Penny 1, Lester Middle School. That's gonna be 170. The women's Nike Zoom Vermero 5, Pink Foam and Team Red. That's gonna be 160. The Nike Zoom KD3, Easy Money. That's gonna be on the 9th for 130. The Nike Dunk Low Premium Sequoia. That's $120. The women's Air Jordan 2 Low Sky J Orange. That's on the 10th for 150. The Jordan Tatum 1 Denim, that's 120. The Nike Air Flight Hirachi Kobe Bryant Away PE, that's 125. Check out last week's Hard Pass, actually, for our thoughts on those. Uh, the women's Nike Dunk Low Twist Coconut Milk Vivid Sulfur, that's going to be 125. The Nike Air Force 1 Low Bronx Origin, that's on the 11th for 150. The women's Nike Dunk Low Green Satin, that's 110. The Nike Jaw 1 Light Smoke Gray, that's going to be 110. The Puma MB02 Oreo, that's going to be 130. The Nike Dunk Low Industrial Blue, that's 110. The Nike Dunk Low Mystic Red Cargo Khaki, that's on the 12th for 115. The Women's Nike Dunk Low Total Orange, that's going to be 120. The Air Jordan 12 Filled Purple, that's 200. And then the Nike KD 16 NY versus NY, those are 160. Now, our co pick of the week is the Croc Mischief Big Red Boot Yellow on August 9th for 450. You know what? Props to Mischief for unleashing the epic sneaker troll and naming the release the Yellow Colorway of the Big Red Boot. That would be like calling the Air Jordan 2 the Air Jordan 1 plus 1. Anyways, between the Crocs co-branding, the Paris Hilton modeling, and the potential for mammoth size custom gibbets that are sure to get people talking, we could be on the verge of mischief becoming the next big name in streetwear, even if they don't actually care for that label or even try to encourage it, which I guess is kind of the point. Keep on trolling, fellas. You know what you're doing over there. 
And then our call pick of the week is Beffy's Beauty Supply Union LA Air Jordan 1. This is going to be on the 11th for 200 One of the most intriguing releases of 2023 is Union's follow-up to their highly successful Air Jordan 1 collaboration back in 2018. No offense to the Union Jordan 1 KO lows, which are still available now in stores. With a woven pattern across the upper that brings to mind Nike's Footscape series, these Jordan 1s are going for something different compared to the 2018 Jays. And that might have something to do with the recent reveal by Union co-founder Chris Gibbs that this is actually a co-production with Beffy's Beauty Supply, which is owned by Beth Beffy Burkett. Beffy is a co-owner and operator of Union, which she shares with her husband, Chris Gibbs. Yeah, can't wait to hear more about the story behind these sneakers now that more context is coming to light. And then the pick of the millennium is the Rigorer AR1 ice cream. This is on the 11th for 100 bucks. And to Kyrie who? What a world we live in that Anthony Davis NBA champion and one of the 75 greatest players in league history does not have a signature shoe and yet Austin Reeves, Davis's teammate and cult hero of my 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers does. Earlier this year, Reeves signed with Chinese brand Rigorer, who I've known about since they signed Reeves earlier this year. Reeves' first drop will be exclusive to Rigorer's online store and at Kicks Crew with the ice cream colorway in homage to Reeves' favorite treat going up in Arkansas. The shoes will come in a special edition box and it looks like a pair of matching socks as well. Not a bad introduction, Rigorer, who I'm probably botching the pronunciation of and I apologize. Also, here are your Yeezy B socks and new releases. The Yeezy 350 Boost V2 Bone that's gonna be on the 7th for 230. The 500 Bone White that's gonna be on the 7th for 210. And then the Yeezy Foam Runner Carbon is gonna be 90 bucks. And then the Slide Glow Green is gonna be on the 10th for 60 bucks. Okay, it's time for this week's Hard Pass. We'll take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. This week, we're doing a pair of Hard Passes because, you know, why not? Let's start off with all those NBA players who tweeted interest in the Saudi bag after it was rumored that PSG star Kylian Mbappe received a $776 million offer from Al Halal. Yeah, that wasn't great. Even if they were joking, LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and other stars flipped out when they heard about the offer and tweeted their thoughts. I mean, even Draymond Green got in on it, and no offense to Draymond, four-time champion and guy who effectively ended the pool party in San Francisco, but... Dude, no, they don't love you like that. You're not Mbappe. It's every bit as tone deaf as the live golfers who said they were growing the game when they signed on. And it looks especially bad when the actual Mbappe offer was actually in the $220 million range. All that news cycle did was plant into people's minds that LeBron can be had for a price, true or not. James already takes it on the chin for his lack of a stance on the NBA's and Nike's relationship with China, and this just gave those who already don't like him even more talking points. Personally, I couldn't care less what these athletes do with their several hundred million dollar offers, real or imagined. Just don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. It comes down to presentation. If LeBron did not present himself as someone who champions civil rights and frames himself as always being on the right side of history, no one would care. Better yet, if he did take a Saudi offer and was just honest about it like Harold Varner III was and flat out admitted, yeah, it's about the money and all those clowns saying otherwise are dumb, I think most people would understand. Ah well, it's just a hypothetical. It's not gonna happen. Unless the Saudis buy the big three and Ice Cube becomes basketball Greg Norman. Oh, I think I just got a headache thinking about that. Mostly because of, you know, noted Masters choker Greg Norman. Anyway. Uh, what isn't a hypothetical, apparently, is the PlayStation 5 Pro. According to several prominent leakers in the video game world, a PlayStation 5 Pro could be dropping in the second half of 2024. This half-step console would follow in the footsteps of 2016's PlayStation 4 Pro, a follow-up to 2013's PlayStation 4. There are no specs so far on the yet-to-be-confirmed PS5 Pro, but speculation is that the two big features will be 8K resolution and ray tracing, a graphics feature that dramatically improves lighting effects in games. Other ideas floating around for the PS5 Pro include larger storage space and improved compatibility with the PSVR 2. Hey, remember the PSVR 2? That's a thing that actually came out just this year. Anyways, with all of this smoke, it's likely that Sony and their partners are gearing up for a PS5 Pro and it's just a matter of when it will actually drop. Putting it in the latter 2024 timeframe pits it against the rumored successor to the Nintendo Switch and also possibly signals the halfway point for this console generation. To which I would say, does it feel like this generation has even started? I don't 
I don't know about you, but I am happy with my PS5 and my Xbox Series X. With backwards compatibility so integrated into both consoles, I really don't know half the time if the game I'm playing works on both a PS4 or PS5 or an Xbox One or an Xbox Series X. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I always know the truth is just that I just don't care. I'm both catching up on games I missed out on in the previous generation because the loading times were so egregious and playing titles that are exclusive to this current generation that aren't necessarily pushing the limits of the hardware. I mean, if you have a couple of hours to kill, I highly recommend Viewfinder, a game that just came out a few weeks ago on PS5. It's a beautiful, mind-bending experience, but not one where I was going, hey, you know what this needs? AK visuals and ray tracing. And that goes for a lot of exclusive games on the PS5 and Series X. Okay, okay, maybe the ray tracing would be nice to see what the fuss is all about since I don't have a high power PC or any kind of PC if we're being honest, but it's not a feature that I'm willing to drop another $500 for when my PS5 and Series X are perfectly capable of doing the job. And also, by the time we get to holiday 2024, does it really feel like this generation is halfway over? The pandemic screwed up the timeline. A lot of people are just now getting their PS5s as supply chains are getting better and resellers are quickly dumping their own stock. And we are just now getting games that could only happen on these consoles. Sony needs to calm down. Let Nintendo drop the Switch 2 or Super Nintendo Switch or whatever it's going to be called and just give us PS5 Slims with bigger storage space. Microsoft already said they're not doing a half-step Series X upgrade. Good. Follow their lead, Sony. Even if you are in the lead anyway that's gonna do it for the show thank you for watching hard pass i'm Jacques slate i'll see you next week but not before we leave you with the viewer hard pass yo yo you got play what's up man uh this is paulo and uh it's uh 3 a.m here in manila and i am uh coming home from my uh from my call center job i'm an expat here in manila uh almost in 2023 people woke up shout out to uh Gila filipinas we're taking it all the way baby Jordan Clarkson, or we're going to lose in the first round. Hey, it's just not real tip. Anyways, um, I, I just had a thought, man. Like, you know, it's just a thought that I had while I'm driving, and the traffic is horrible because it's 3 a.m. and the traffic, I don't understand why. Um, have you ever thought about um, making Hard Pass own YouTube channel? I mean, you know, that way you can still do your unboxings on your main channel, and, you know, it'll be all good. But then Hard Pass would have its own YouTube channel. You can do your thing there, man. I think I think that'd be cool. I'm just saying, man, just, you know, give some thought. Just a random thing that I thought about at 3 a.m. here in Manila, driving home from my call center job. Anyways, man, keep up the good work. You are killing it. And, uh, yeah, go give us Filipinas. Woohoo! If you would like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Wait. Wait. What did he say? I should move Hard Pass to a new channel? Huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Starting next week, Hard Pass is moving to its own YouTube channel. It's been something we here at the show have been talking about for a while and now just felt like it's the right time. We'll have more to reveal in the coming days and weeks and months. And, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. And I just want to say thank you all for the support of the show through the years. And don't worry, Hard Pass will continue to do what we do. And that's not changing. Sorry if you like Kanye or live golf or whatever, but that's not going anywhere. Meanwhile, stay tuned here for more features and well, more unboxings and probably a lot more golf. All right. I'll see you guys next week on the Hard Pass channel, but stay tuned here for more content as well. All right, peace.